prophets, uh, prophets witness it to all those years happen. And it says, the God setting things right that we r read about has become Jesus setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. Amen. And, and, and I think when I read that, it's, it's, just, it's just really beautiful. Because, you know, like in, back in the day, you know, back in, I went to Bible school. I did the whole thing, you know, and, and I, I used to think like, you know, I really have to strive for, for God to love me, you know. But God actually really loved me. <laughs> You know, and, 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 and I, would, I would do the whole worship thing. I, would do, I was an usher. I, w I was everything. Seriously, it's crazy. And until one day, you know, I, uh, it really hit me. It's like, wow, he really loves me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and, and out of sheer uh, generosity, you know, he gave his life for us. So we, may, we uh, are in right standing with him. And I think that's amazing because, you know, uh, there's, there's a, a response that comes out of it. And we don't have to do anything. You know, it's, it's not that he comes like, love me. You know, but he just loves you right where you are. It doesn't matter where you are, you know. And out of that, do something for him. Amen. So, Father, we give, we, give, we give it all today, Lord, to you. Not because we have to, but because we want to. Jesus, Father, we receive your love today. We uh, choose to identify ourselves with you. You are our identity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, we're going to do a new song today. Uh, and, and, and this song requires you. <laughs> Say, me. <laughs> So um, I, we, we did it, I think, a long time ago, but we're going to do it again. And, and there's a part of this song that says, uh, it goes something like this. It goes, uh, could you play it, please? It goes like, ole, 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 ole. There you go. She knows that. Okay, just so you know, ole, in, in, I'm international, as you can see. You know, I have an accent, and, and I'm really handsome, too, you know. So... <laughs> So there's a, there's a part of this song, you know, where you're, you're, you're going to sing with us. And it goes, let me, I have it here. Uh, so it goes. Ole, ole, ole. There you go. Ole, ole, ole. Sing this with, with us. Come on. Ole, 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 ole. There you go. Ole, one more time, one more time. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. All right, all right. Okay, so we, in, in other countries, we do that as a way to cheer when, whenever people is chanting in, in soccer stadiums, whenever you're cheering for your favorite team, you know? Yeah, yeah, we do that. I know, we're crazy. But, hey, today, in the same way, why, why we don't chant and praise Jesus, you know, using that? Will that be okay? Are you okay with that? Yeah, okay. Ole, there you go. All right, guys. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go.
Come on. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. Hey. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, ole. Ole, 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 ole. Ole, She rolled back the corners from my eyes. And now we can see you. Shown us the way the truth is love. We offer our lives to bring you faith. We cut in your freedom. We cut in your freedom. Come on, church. We give it all away. away. Hey. Give it all. Shadow praise to the King of Kings. Come on.
to worship you, Lord. Jesus, name above all names. the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome, we have, and we have overcome by 
the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcomes. Sing it out, we have, we have overcome by the blood of blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony overcome Savior Savior worthy of honor and glory worthy of all of our praise you overcame giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. As you've received Him, how did you receive Him? He did it all. You just received what He had to give you, salvation, forgiveness of sins, your righteousness, totally qualified, the spirit of sonship, he just gave it to you. As you received him, so walk. How do we walk? We just receive what Jesus did. See, he did the whole victory. The, all the victory was his. That's what we just sang. <laughs> it's all his victory. It's not up to you. Yeah. You don't have to be good enough. Because you weren't. None of us were. As you receive, were you good enough to receive salvation? No, you just received. So walk. You, so walk today. You're qualified today. Yeah, you're qualified today. You qualify for healing today. Yeah. It's a done deal. Thank you, Jesus. We are receivers from you. We receive everything you give to us. We're not working for it. it. just That just makes light of what you've done. No, no. We say the victory was yours. You did it all. And we're your kids. 
And I thank you that you bless your kids. So I thank you that these sheep of yours are all fed good food because we're feeding only on you and your finished work. I thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Oh, we love you. Oh, we love you. Thank you that it, it just springs up from us now because we've experienced your love. Oh, we love you. Thank you that you've qualified us. Thank you that right now there is nothing between us and you. Papa, there are no barriers. It's an open heaven. Praise you. Oh, we love you. Oh, we love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's a couple. And there's some that would share. Is there anybody that needs one that didn't get one? Yeah. Put your hand up and just right back here. And in the back. In the back over there. And over here. I didn't get one. But that's all right. Um, I don't need one. No, 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 no. I know what's in there. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, hang on to that for me, please. There right now where there are five different nations watching us online, I just said. You're going to hear more about that today. Listen, I, I, hey, if you are a, if this is your first time, we have connection cards that we give to our first time guests and you just, you fill that out and you take it to the resource table right over there and we have a gift to give you. And see what we do. If, so if you need a connection card, would you just, just put your hand up and, and back here and thank you. And back here, thank you so much. We're so pleased you're with us today. And, and if you take that to that resource table there, you're going to get a free gift. And Ginny right here who runs our resource table is going to get that for you. So right after worship, just run it over there. And we're just so pleased that you would spend your morning with us today. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to ask that if uh, at this time that you get your um, offerings ready, uh, you should have give, been given an offering uh, in your bulletin. If you need an offering envelope, again, just put your hands up. There are uh, ushers that will see to you. We're going to keep our ushers really busy today. They'll see to make sure you get a, an offering envelope and fill those out. And as you're doing that, and those are online, if you're, I would just invite you to also support this, this work of grace, and uh, there's a tab on our button there you can push, and it, it won't take you off screen. You'll be able to stay and continue to watch what's going on as you uh, contribute to this, this ministry, so thank you for that. Um, I, and I'm just going to say this, just, just, just real quick. Uh, in two weeks, in a week and a half, on the 17th, starting on a Wednesday, Bertie Brits is going to be coming. And we get him, praise the Lord. We get him Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then he's going to preach for us on Sunday. 
And I mean, if you have not heard him, you will be blessed. You, you're going to want to make as many of those evening sessions as you can. There's a little mini grace revival going on that week. And then that Sunday morning, oh my, I, he's just, it's going to be awesome. So that's, that Sunday is the 21st. But come, it's going to start in a week and a half. So you've got some time to tell friends and family they will not be disappointed. You can tell them, come, you'll be blown away by his message. He's so passionate, so powerful. Okay, I want to know if you remember, I'm going to call forth a video here by the power vested in me. <laughs> See if you remember this. And so clear on who Jesus is, what he's done, and what life in Christ is really like. After your message, we enjoy times of uh, live worship together. We'll celebrate communion. Uh, I may share an illustration about God's grace. And then we'll pray for people in light of what Christ has already done for them. That's what Grace Buffet is all about. You know, you guys are enjoying a fantastic journey in Jesus. You're enjoying the life of Jesus in you, flowing out of you. But I wonder if you really understand how God is using you to impact lives all over the world. We're just a small, small example how God is using you to bring the good news message to people like us. So I want to thank you for that. Listen, I got to get going. I got to get the pancakes on the griddle. People will be arriving soon. See ya. All right. I want our ushers to take up the offering. Let's start the offerings. And, and, and while the offering is being taken up, I want to introduce to you in person Art Hankel from Canada. Please come up here. So uh, I come a little undressed, I see. Oh, okay, well, yeah. Some of us just need more help with our I appearance. I guess so. You know, you know what? I, I wore the same shirt so you guys would recognize me from the yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. It's fantastic to be here. It's so good to have you, Art. And we've been working him so hard since he came. Oh, man, all that sightseeing. <laughs> we made... The golden we, Driller. We made... Hey, he wanted photo ops. I took him to see the Golden Driller. What? Praying, I don't know where you go. The praying hands. Okay, that's important. Yes. Man. Yes. Hey, you know what? I got some gifts. All right, go, man. You know, we, we sent you guys a uh, care package with some pancakes. I know, and I know. Things. I, and sh and uh, Christy stole the maple syrup. You know what? <laughs> Hi, everybody online. Uh, we remember that. And so, obviously, if I'm coming here live, I can't just come empty handed. So. I came with some gifts. All okay. right. So first of all, for Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> and so that Christy wouldn't feel left out, I bought you something I know you would enjoy. Canadian sugar cubes. <laughs> Good enough, that box is good enough for three cups of tea for you. <laughs> that's true, that's true. And uh, a few years ago, I put out a, a comedy DVD called Mr. Law and Mr. Grace. I play both parts. There are six copies of that DVD taped underneath some of these chairs. Check it out. You may get that. Check, check the it out. Chair. It's under one of those or chairs. Check the chairs that are next to you since we have some vacant yeah, chairs. Yeah, just check them out. They're and if you find it, you got it. And that's, oh, there I see we go. One there. Hold it up if you got it. There's we go. There, okay. Over here. Over there. Yes. Oh, there we are here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. 
Next, awesome. next week we're doing bingo. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Fundraiser. Grace United. Fundraiser. There you go. I don't oh, think you should be saying bingo and wearing that at the same oh, time. Oh, <laughs> I just put that together. Are you the father of the priest? Well, you know what? Um, my group in Canada, hi guys, and for those who are all over the world watching, uh, we've been plugging in for the last six months. Meeting at 8.30 in the morning, you guys, we are very dedicated. Yeah. And we have breakfast together, we sit down and enjoy our breakfast watching uh, the service, and then sometimes we'll have, uh, uh, we'll have communion with you guys as you're doing it. Or sometimes we'll just do it on our own, we'll have worship time together, and then we'll sit around and we'll talk for half an hour, 40 minutes. But you know, we're just one of uh, many people, and uh, one of several groups that we know of, and there could be many more, that do similar things. And uh, we were just looking at stats this morning, 37 different countries have uh, come to your website, have watched either your live streaming or your uh, teaching uh, tapes. Fantastic. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just able to uh, connect with a lot of people online uh, on behalf of Healing Grace. You know, you don't have to be in Tulsa to do that because right. it's online. Yeah. So why not have a guy who's actually watching online do it? That's right. Right? Yeah. And so I'm connecting with people... Uh, and I'm going to read some comments later on in the service. Awesome. That's going to blow you guys away because you're going to feel and hear what's happening in people's lives that you don't even know they exist. But they're tuning in to you guys each week. Yeah. Thank you, Art. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Art, you know, officially, Art is our international liaison. I know. <laughs> I made that up for Healing Grace. And he, and he reaches out. That's what he does is he reaches out to people who have come to, <laughs> you got about 15 seconds, buddy, I mean, you're off there. <laughs> Reaches out to people who have reached out to us from all over the world, and we just, uh, I just forward them to you, Art, and Art sends out, uh, a, it's called uh, Healing Grace Touch, it's an e-flyer, and, and he, he, there's some of the pictures, and we're going to be reading little comments from these people uh, later on in the service. Yeah. And you, say, and you encourage them. That's what we want to do. Is we don't, that people aren't out there to serve healing grace. We're there to serve them. Yeah. And you, we want to strengthen them. And that's what you do. You connect. You support them. Encourage them. And strengthen them in the word of grace. And thank you for doing that. Right on. Hallelujah. That's Thanks for being here. Yes. We'll hear for, more from Art in just a few minutes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. I don't usually, if you're a first-time visitor, I don't usually look like this. <laughs> but I used to. <laughs> In fact, uh, this, is, this, is, this is pretty much what I wore every, every Sunday. In fact, not just on Sundays, I wore it every day. Especially when you go to, like, the Catholic hospitals, because I learned if you're in a Catholic hospital, you can go anywhere with this. I'm just saying, <laughs> it helps. <laughs> All right. But... I, you know, I, I, and I'm not, I, and, and I want to make very clear something. Is I, I, today, I wanted to give my testimony, okay? And this is part of who, this is part of my testimony. And I, and I, I do not, I'm not making, I'm not, and I'm not belittling, belittling at all those who wear the clergy collar. I mean, it's a matter of personal choice, but I'll tell you something. What it, what, I want to tell you what it meant to me. And, and, and I want to tell you, um, I want to tell you why I don't wear it anymore. The, the, clergy, collar, the, the clergy collar itself, you know, is a symbol. It arises from the idea of slavery. This is the manacle around the neck, to which you would attach chains to drag your slave to where you want your slave to go. And by wearing the collar, I was, I was living out the last leg of my journey of wearing myself out in the law of God and in my own obedience to Him. So I want to, I want to talk about that today because I'm not the only one wearing a collar. There's a verse I want to read to you. This is Romans 5.8. All right, we'll just start with this. 
But God demonstrates in the King James Version, and this is the way I remember memorizing this when I was a kid, but God commendeth. God commends His love. In, in fact, the Young's literal translation says that too. Yeah. God commends His love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God commends His love for us. That Greek word means to bring together. It means to meet. It's like an invitation. It's like, it's like, it's like me saying, say, this is art. Say hello to our friend. It's bringing, it's bringing two together. So God introduces His love to us. How does He introduce His love to us? In the death of Jesus. And the more you understand, see, the more you understand God's sacrifice in Jesus, the more you understand what Jesus did in His death and His resurrection, the more you understand God's love. And the corollary to that is, is also true. If you have a partial understanding of what Jesus did for you on the cross, you will have and only be able to receive a partial understanding of God's love for you. And that's the position I was in because I did not understand what Jesus did for me. I was a pastor in the Lutheran Church for 20 years. never been a time in my life when God wasn't a part of me. I've known it. I grew up with God. I grew up in a good home. My, 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 uh, my parents took us to church. My dad died when I was very young. I was nine years old, and he passed away. I remember, I remember uh, my mother coming into our bedroom, sitting down on the bed that night, and she said, God is going to take care of us. God is going to take care of us. And, uh, and I believed her. Because I had seen in her a, a real faith. I didn't understand God at that age. But I, I saw in her that God was real. I mean, God was real to her. She, it didn't matter what, how early I would get up in the morning. When I went downstairs, my mother was sitting at the kitchen table with her Bible open and her notepad. And she would be writing in her notepad and writing in her Bible the things that God was speaking to her in the Word. I mean, it didn't matter how early I got up. She was there before <laughs> doing her Bible study and being in prayer with the Lord. She would, when, I remember watching her write the offering checks out. And we'd have these offering checks, and it'd be just, to me, it just seemed like a lot of money. I mean, you're giving a lot of money. That was her tithe check. Well, by golly, she was going to give it. Why? Because God was real to her. She just exemplified that. You know, I remember we would go to, she would, she'd, she'd pull us all to church when, I mean, kids don't want to go to church. I didn't want to go to church. She'd pull us to church when, 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 even, when, when nobody else wanted to go to church in the church, she would go to church. She would pull us to those services. And then and it's like our services weren't even enough. We had to go to other people's church. It'd be a special thing going on. We got to go to their church. We not only had to help out with our vacation Bible school, she's got to help out with other people's vacation Bible school. She, that's how she was. It was real. It was visible to me. I knew God was real. But my understanding of God was that God was looking down on me and, and that it's sort of like the Santa Claus understanding of God. And, and he's looking to see if I'm naughty or nice. And I've got to please him. You know, that's the message that we give our kids in Sunday school. We give all, our kids all kinds of weird messages. Not in this Sunday school, not in this church, but in churches that we've grown up in. We got messages from people, well-meaning people, but they didn't know. They didn't know any better. They were as much in bondage as we were before we understood what Jesus did for us. And they taught us weird things. Sherry was telling me one of the things that she was taught when she was growing up is that every time she disobeyed or did something that displeased God, you know, you all start off with a mansion in heaven. You, she got, and, then, and the teacher would say, every time she did something bad, God would take a brick out of her mansion. She said by the time she was 16 years old, she didn't even have a foundation left. <laughs> to which her parents would say, amen, that's absolutely true. <laughs> 
But you see, what does this mean? It, it means I do. It, slavery is about doing. It's not about being. Slavery is about what can I do for you. Slavery is about you do this, you do that. Okay, it's not, it's not, about, it's not about who I am to, to God. It's not about being if I'm a, a, at all. It's all about doing. I remember I gave my life to Jesus Christ as a, at a Billy Graham crusade. And man, I went down there with thousands of other, other people. It was overpowering. It was beautiful. How many of you gave your life to Jesus at a Billy Graham crusade? Anyone else here? Praise the Lord. Thank God for Billy Graham. I remember standing there and just this little kid, I'm just this little kid and all these thousands of people, you know, wondering if the, wondering if, if the bus was going to leave without me and Billy Graham always assuring every crowd, the buses are not going to leave without you. <laughs> and I'm down there and I gave my life to Jesus and I felt so clean, felt so loved, felt so accepted by God, oh Like nothing I had ever felt before. I knew I was okay with God. I knew God wasn't mad at me. I couldn't verbalize any of these things. I just knew that I I just felt good. I felt good. I felt whole. I felt the pleasure of God on me. And and I and I went home, just went to I remember just smiling, just feeling like, ah, it's so good. A week later. A week I believe it was even less than a week later, I distinctly remember laying in that same bed after having done something, you know, I don't know, I don't know what an 11-year-old does, but after having done something and thinking, I must not be saved. I did something bad. How could I do something bad and still be saved? I mean, maybe, maybe it didn't take. Maybe there's something wrong with me. There are many of you have gone through that similar thing. And I remember getting up from my bed after having that guilt, that guilt weigh on me, that condemnation weigh on me. And I went to that window in my bedroom. I knelt down there because I thought God was out there. And he's going to see me. And I gave my life to Jesus again. And this time I'm going to do better. Change. And uh, I don't know how long it was after that before I had to do it all again. And I went to church camp, great church camp. Had a lot of fun. Heard all about Jesus more. I gave my life to Jesus every chance I could. <laughs> and I don't know how many times I gave my life to Jesus. But I, I did it over and over again. There's a pattern developing, you see. It's a pattern. That's, what servant, that's, what, that's what slaves do. See, because it's all based on my doing. Trying to please God with my life. Or you please God when you do well. God is pleased with you when you do well. You know, you don't even have to say what the, other, what the flip side of that is. Because people get it. God is not pleased with me when I don't do well. So every time we don't do well, God is frowning. God is not pleased with me. And I tell you, I, was a, I felt in my, in my soul that I was a pathetic servant. Because I was always looking to please God, and what my focus was always on was on those places, those, those thoughts, those words, those actions that, that didn't qualify as being of God. You hone in on them. You become sin-focused. That's what you see. You could do a hundred things right, do one thing wrong. What are you going to focus on, that wrong thing? And I am not worthy because of that. I disqualify myself because of that. And I mean, I... I was a straight arrow. I did, I mean, I, I wanted to please God. I wanted to from an early age. My heart was for Him. I wanted to live right. And I worked hard at living right. Just this, you know, I'm, I'm this servant. And God, you're my master. You're my master. But I am a bad servant. Look at how I failed. And so I would inevitably just redouble my efforts. And I, I went through that pattern all the time. And, and it just... All it did, every time, every time I went through that pattern, it just ticks you down. One more level. One more level. Look how bad you are. That's the devil talking. Look how, look, can't you get anything right? This verse became my theme verse. And this is no joke. Luke 17, 10. 
So likewise you and you, this is Jesus. So likewise you and you have done all those things which you are commanded say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. That was my, that was my theme verse for my life. So likewise, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable, and they soften the word doulos by making it servant, but the word there is slave. We are unprofitable slaves. When you've done everything and done it perfect and done it absolutely right, you just say, I've done what was my duty. That's God saying to you, God saying you've done everything perfect, you've done everything right, go into your slave quarters. At least you're not going to get beat tonight. Jesus, I didn't know that Jesus was trying to do two different things. I didn't understand the two covenants. I did not understand that Jesus was trying to show people how bad a deal the old covenant was. You know, even if you do it perfect, you don't even get a pat on the head. It's like, psh, you've done just what was expected of you. Go on. That's the old covenant. That's live as hard and as perfect as you can. And what's the end of that? Well, you're going to mess up. So the end is going to be condemnation and guilt. And that's what you're going to live in. And I'm so stupid. And how come I can't live right? How come, I, how come I can't be like these other people that I see? Those other people, they're just better at their hypocrisy. And, it, and, it, and, and, if, and if you are living as the servant, if your identity is the slave, you end up in a bad and dark place. And it just got worse, you know. Now, my mother um, found a wonderful man, remarried. He was a Lutheran. We, also, we all went from being Presbyterians to being Lutherans. That's how I became a Lutheran. And, and we, went, we would go to church all the time again. None of that stopped, you know, that my parents loved Jesus. And... and and in the Lutheran church, you have to confess your sins. I mean, you don't have to do it one-on-one -on -one with a priest. We're a little lazier than Catholics. We, you, we, you just have to do it en masse. You do it, you know, all together. We call it corporate uh, confession and absolute, absolution. And so every Sunday you come in and, you, and, and here we go. Here's what, here's what we would say and here's what I made people say when I became a pastor. We all, together, we all together said, I am in bondage to sin and cannot free myself. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. Uh, wherefore, I flee to you for your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace. Pause. Confess all the sins. You can do it quietly, you know. <clears throat> the pastor gets up and he says, he says and he says, and I said, to those who have penned in, I declare to you, your sins are forgiven you. On the other hand, by the same authority, I declare, this is a quote, I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving, that so long as you continue in your impenitence, God has not forgiven you your sins and will assuredly visit your iniquities upon you. If you turn not from your evil ways and come to repentance and faith in Christ, ere the day of grace be ended. That's a quote from the LSBH. I heard that every week. You know what being penitent means? It means being sorry. It means, it means to be sorry, to show sorrow or regret. As sometimes I showed more sorrow and regret than other times. How much sorrow and regret did I need to show before I knew I was forgiven? Well, guess what? I never knew. I never knew. I didn't know which category I was in. And did you notice they spent a whole lot more time in his absolution telling you if you're talking to the impenitent people. If you really repent, God forgives you. But if you're impenitent, the wrath, condemnation. You, you, we spent a lot more time telling people, scaring them. There's no good news in that. That is not, that is antichrist. It is antichrist. But I believed it because that's all I knew. That's what the church teaches. <laughs> it was in my denomination. When I became a pastor, I said that. Every, I made people say that every, every week. You're in bondage of sin. Darn right you are. I've been penitent enough. I don't know. Never knew how to answer that question. Because I didn't know. See, see, here's the thing. 
is there was no understanding of the finished work of Christ. In other words, there was no understanding of what Jesus really did on the cross. Ergo, I never experienced Christ's love for me. I never knew his love. You know when I experienced his love? On the floor of a stadium at a Billy Graham crusade. I couldn't get back to that place. I, when you are living as a slave to do good, to please God, you will never have peace. I never had peace. I constantly confessed my sin. I constantly walked around confessing my sin. I was a crazy man. The law makes you crazy. I, I, I was constant condemnation, constant unworthiness. The end result of that for me, and there are a couple of end results that can occur, but the end, one of the end results is, is just blatant hypocrisy and judgmentalism. And there are people who are fiercely judgmental and full of hate and spite. But, the, but where that ended up for me, where that path led me as a slave to God was self-loathing. And I hated myself. I found no worthiness in me. I remember, you know, I told you I was, a, I was a straight arrow, and I was. I went to seminary, went to a Lutheran seminary, taught all about, you know, God's grace, taught, taught Lutheran theology, learned a lot, learned a, learned a ton, you know. It was good. So much of it was good. And uh, they had required chapel, you know, you had to go to chapel. Well, I, I hung out with, like, you know, bad boys who, they, they skipped chapel. Well, I never even would have thought to do that before. I thought, well, this is cool. I'm just going to skip chapel. And we would go to the donut shop. Not all the time, okay, but sometimes we would go. And outside this donut shop was this big plate glass window that had the reflective glass, you know, the mirror glass to get the, the heat uh, of the sun so they wouldn't come in. And I remember passing by that window as we were going in, skipping chapel, going in to get a donut, and, and something rose up in me, and I, and I saw my image, and I pointed to the image, my image in that mirror, and I said, I hate that man. I hate that man. That just rose up out of me. That was absolutely the truth. I found no good in me. And it drove me. It drove me to work harder for God. I never felt his love, but I worked. I will be God's servant. I will be God's servant. I will be God's servant. Man, I got to a place where I got to put this clergy collar on, and I was like, yes, this is who I am. I will exceed. I, I will be more zealous, as Paul said. I will be more zealous than my peers. I will please you, God. I will work hard to please you. I... I I, I remember, I, I, I remember, you know, you're, you're self-loathing because of the law. You, one of the places that ends up for, ended up for me was I couldn't accept any compliments. I knew I was not worthy of any compliments. Somebody would compliment me on something I'd do right. I, I put my head down. One time I went to a Women's Aglow meeting and, and in my, at my first church. And my first church, they loved me. They loved me. And I, and, I, and, I, and I loved doing, you know, I loved visiting them. I loved, I loved the preaching. I loved, it. I loved a lot about it. And, and um, this, this um, sweet woman from my, my church, who, uh, she was like an example to me. And she was the president of the Women's Aglow. And for a little town, I don't know, you know, 150 people, something like that, all these women who, you know, they're charismatic. And they're on, well, I came to Oral Roberts University. That resonated with me. And it was like, well, here's this Lutheran who's charismatic. This is odd. Come speak for us, you know. And so I was so happy to do that. And she, and she said, and she got up to introduce me. And she said, I, look, she said, I know that this is a little odd what I'm about to say. But I believe God gave me this verse for my pastor. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Just if I could have crawled out of my skin, I would have. I was no, no, no. That is not true. That is, that is, that is, that is absolutely wrong. It's wrong on a lot of levels. <laughs> and I, and I, my head was down, and I was like, oh, just if I could have run out of the room, I would have run. I got up and did my thing and. And left. 
I did not know that that was true. And that it's not just true, wasn't just true for me, but right now, it is absolutely true of you. You are his beloved daughter. And he is well pleased with you. Because you believe in his son. And as Jesus is, so are we in this world. The father is as pleased with you as he is with his son. He says that to you right now. You're my beloved son. I'm so pleased with you. I'm so pleased with you. Feel my pleasure over you. I couldn't receive that. I just delved into work, delved into theology, thinking. I and and I was just uh, so zealous. I was going to be the example. I I I was. I found the people that, I found the pastors in that little town, Blairsville, Pennsylvania, a population of 4,200 when I was there. I don't know what it is now. Coal mining town, Pennsylvania, western Pennsylvania. I found the people who said they were serious about God. You know, I couldn't get the Presbyterian guy. I couldn't get the Methodist guy. But I'll tell you who I did get. I, got, I, I, got, I gathered together the Assembly of God pastor. I got the free uh, the free. Free Methodist, the Free Methodist pastor there, you know, they're zealous. I got the, uh, I got the Baptist, you know, pastor, and I, and I got, and, and I got, and I got, and, then there, and there was a Pentecostal, and I got the Pentecostal pastor, and I got them all together. I said, come on, we need revival in this town. This is a, this is a Lutheran talking. We're going to, we got to pray it in. Come on, you guys, what's the matter with you? Well, and, and I came in as a tornado. I'm telling you, I'm getting up at 5.30 in the morning. You come meet me at my church. We're praying. And we're going to pray every day. We had to meet at 5.30 because I, we all had kids. And we had to be back to get our kids ready for school at 7 a.m. So we met at my church at 5.30 in the morning. We did that for two years. And I was the guy that rounded them up and called them and got them out of bed. I was their thorn in the flesh. You will be obedient. Come on. Assembly of God wimps. <laughs> we, we would pray in that building in my church. We would walk the streets of Blairsville and we would just, we would just pray down. Fire God on that town. I, I, I did better than anybody. I did more than you. I fasted. I started fasting to get God's favor. I mean, to show God that I was approved to get rid of the junk that was in me. And I fasted to purify myself. I was gonna, I, I was, I was gonna buffet my body to get God's approval and to get this ugly sin out of me. And I, I fast for, I started fasting for three days. I started fasting for five. I did a week. I started doing two week fasts. I did three week fasts. I got my, I got myself to a place where every Lent I would fast entire Lent, and it wasn't just the forty days of Lent because Lent is forty days plus Sundays. I would fast. The 40 days plus the Sundays, I fasted 46 days every Lent. I didn't know anybody else doing that. <laughs> One day I was driving home from church. I was driving home from church, and my whole face on the left side went numb, and my eye drooped, and I'm looking at my face in the mirror. I'd suffered a mini stroke. In the middle of this fast. And I, I pulled over to the side of the road. It scared me. I cried out to Jesus. I put my hand on my face. And I prayed for healing. In my face. But that's the kind of crazy things you do. When you don't. When you're relating to God by your doing. Crazy. Stupid things. Stupid. It's dumb to fast that long. Jesus did it. God bless Jesus. He's the Savior. He can. <laughs> you know what? I, I did stupid things. One Christmas Eve, I, I, had a, I was throwing up all day. Now, there's a big deal in, in the Lutheran Church. You have a Christmas Eve service. Okay? And I mean, candlelights and, you know, kumbaya. Well, not kumbaya. You know what I mean. And... <laughs> 
And it's a big deal. Everybody comes in. The church is full Christmas Eve in the evenings. And I, and, and I was, and I got up, and I sick, so sick, 102.5 fever, throwing up all day. And I remember, it's, I won't give you all the deals, but hey, I was like, I was, I, I was, I would, I would just declare, I will go to church tonight. I will preach Jesus Christ tonight. And I, I went to church that night. And I, I thankfully wasn't throwing up anymore, but I could hardly stand. And we went through the whole thing. You went through the whole, I don't know how I got through it. But here, okay, I have to tell you this story. How many of you know what an Advent wreath is? Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, how ma- all right. How many don't know what an Advent, and it's okay. It's a thing. Okay, I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, you'll see these. Now you'll look for these. Uh, like the homestyle Advent wreaths are about that big. They're a circle. There's four candles on them. And you start lighting those four weeks before Christmas. And it's a way to get ready for Christmas, you know. And you just repent of your sins more. And so each week, each Sunday, you light another candle. First week, you light one candle. Second week, you light two. Third, you light three. Fourth, you light. And then Christmas, the Christmas Eve, there's a candle right in the middle. That's the Christ candle. And you light that one on Christmas Eve. Yay, it's Christmas. Celebrate Jesus. You know, that's what we did. We have the little home versions. But, you know, Lutherans, we do everything right. We, we had, like, you have the... The, the, the liturgical advent wreaths, okay? It got to be big. It got to be heavy. This thing was made out of solid brass. It was three feet in diameter. It was held in place by a 30 foot chain that ran to the top. I mean, you know, scaffolding, everything. They're just, that's how we are. And you link it way up there, and the chain comes all the way down. It's like this medieval chandelier right in the front of the church. Big, heavy, 70, 80 pounds. I mean, big. And it was, placed, it, was, it was placed up at the altar area, okay? So in the altar area, you got your altar. That's what we had an altar. We put the communion on there. And then we have an altar railing. And all the people who want a communion come up to the altar railing, and they kneel at the communion. And me, I would have the chalice, the cup that had the, that had the wine, and each person would have the little tiny little plastic cup thing. back another table come up we do okay so i i'm at the end of the service we're doing communion and and this big And big hunks of wax went kerplunk into the chalice. And I looked at it and I was like, well, now what am I going to do? And, 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 and about the time that my brain got, now what am I going to do? That advent wreath had swung out and then swung back and boom, hit me again. And that was the end of the service. I'm going home. I was committed. And I was busy. And I never found rest. I could not rest. We'd go on vacation. I couldn't rest. Because I always felt guilty about what I wasn't doing. And when I would be doing church stuff, I felt guilty about my family. That the church readily said should be sacrificed for the sake of the world. You know, you're on your own. You know, that's a... When I did family stuff, I felt guilty about not doing church stuff. And I'm a one-man show. I mean, this is Lutheranism. You know, we, you know I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the, the guy that, that does all the visitation. I do the, the prison ministry, the youth group. I did that. The Bible study, the prayer group, home visitation, music ministry, studying the Word, all that stuff. And when I was doing one, I felt guilty about all the rest. It didn't matter what it was. It was never good enough. And I worked and I worked and I worked as a slave, trying to please my God with my efforts. And I worked and I worked and I worked until I was worn out. And a friend of mine handed me a book. 
by Andrew Womack, the war is over. And, and he had gone through in his walk with Jesus, it wasn't clergy, but the same kind of struggles with relating to God based on behavior, based on your performance. I read this book, The War is Over. God is not mad at you. And I couldn't believe what I was reading. In fact, I, he started quoting verses from the scriptures that I'd preached on. Man, I preached, I preached a thousand sermons. I, I preached these verses. I preached them all. And I started reading these verses. And, I, and for the first time in my life, understanding them. And, he, and just, just look at the natural reading. He said, just look at the natural reading of this. What does it say? God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against you. God is not counting your sins against you. It was like a two-by-four to the head. It was like an advent wreath to the head. <laughs> <clears throat> and I, how could this be? Now, how could this be? That Christ, our high priest, made one sacrifice for all sin for all time and then sat down. All sin for all time for all people and sat down. That all my sins, all my past sins, all my present sins, all my future sins, all of them, he gathered up together with him on the cross and they are gone. That he is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. And I said all those things and never got it. And I'm looking and I'm reading this book and I'm thinking, how could this be? How could the whole church be wrong? How could all my education be worthless in setting me free? How could I be the guy who's supposed to know this and not get it? How could that be? That can't be right. And the more I read it, I knew the Holy Spirit, and he's doing this for you right now. If this is the first time you're hearing it. The Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth. Jesus has done it all. It is a finished work. And that leaves you whole. It leaves you acceptable, worthy. You've got the righteousness of God resting on you and it's never leaving. You have fellowship with him that is unbroken. In fact, Christ has co-joined his spirit with yours. He doesn't co-join and then co-unjoin. He's always in you. And I was reading this and I mean... I. I, I don't know how many times I read that book, but the tears, I mean, I, I read reading it, and the tears are coming, I think, I know this is right, I know this is right, and I fall into, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry I had it wrong, but I know this is right, I'm forgiven, I'm so sorry I messed up all these people, I'm, yeah, <laughs> anyway, I get to this place where I'm starting to believe it, and I, I'm going to preach this out, I'm preaching it out, I don't even know all that I need to know, but what else is there to preach? I can't say the same things that I've said before. And I start preaching this out, and and uh, and some people got it, and some people didn't, you know. But I, you know, for the first time in my life, I would, I could read those words of, of Jesus: "Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, take my yoke. Come." He bids us. He pleads with us: "Take my yoke upon you." Like my yoke is easy. My burden is light. I, I could never understand that. And his yoke was never easy for me. It was never light. But now I got it. I was, the lights were coming on. And I started receiving this truth. And I mean, it was changing me. And it was having such dramatic impact on me. And things started falling into place. And scriptures started popping. And I saw stuff I'd never seen before. And I, I began relating to God based on a different paradigm, based on a new covenant, not based on my doing. And I, it's, it's Galatians 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Jesus the law is what you do. You shall, you shall not. Jesus was born into the you shall, you shall nots. He was born into that system of doing. To redeem those, in other words, to purchase out 
those who are under the law, those who are in that system of doing, right? That we might receive the adoption as redeemed slaves, sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Daddy. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, an heir of God through Christ, I am a son. Wait a minute. That means I am not a slave. 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 I am a son. It's hard to get out of slavery. All right, I'll make this declaration to you. I put this on for you today. Excuse me. I am never wearing this again in my life. Yeah. And I feel his love for the first time because I know what Jesus did. I'm forgiven. I'm accepted. And I felt his love pour into me. And more and more, I feel his love. More and more, I feel his love. Uh, last week after the Easter service, I was lay, we're just kind of laying on the bed doing computer stuff, just relaxing, just chilling out. Sh we, I was playing, this, I was playing a, a, a dumb computer game, a matching game, a dumb computer matching game. And Sherry had to go down and put the ham on it. Sherry went down to, to put the ham on for our, our meal later. And and she left, and, I, and I'm playing this game, and I felt Jesus, I don't know how to say it, you know, Jesus is with me all the time, but I felt his presence. I mean, it's like Jesus entered the room. It's like Jesus came right to me, and, 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 and he, he communicated his love to me. I don't know how to say it except that I felt his love on me. I felt his love, and you know what? It wasn't tied to, oh, you did a great sermon. Oh, you did a, you know, that's so good. I love the way you said that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't tied to my performance at all. It was, it was, I love you. Do you know how much I love you? Do you know how much you, I love you? I find my pleasure over you. And for five minutes, Jesus just, just, I just basked in the pleasure and love of my Lord Jesus. And when it was over, it was like Jesus saying, okay, go play your game. It's good. <laughs> And when I stopped crying, because I was weeping, just in the presence of the Lord. And, and when, I, when I, I stopped weeping, I got, played my game, Sherry came back up. I said, do you remember I said to you, I hadn't even said this, I said, I said I've just had a religious experience. I said, I, I, I didn't even know how to communicate it. But I was like, this is love. I'm not trying anymore to please him. You don't have to try to please him. Just know his pleasure over you because you trust in Jesus. Yes. You have sonship, which is being, yes. not slavery, which is doing. So, one of my greatest desires would be to go back to all the churches that I pastored. And to probably get thrown out of all of them, but to be able to say, <laughs> look, I was wrong. I have no problem saying I was wrong. <laughs> Jesus is right. <laughs> and here's what he has done. And just listen to this. But you know, I can't do that. I can at least tell you, and I can tell people that I need, and, and I want to do it. I don't have to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to get this message out because there are a lot of people... Their awareness and they don't even know it. Yeah, right. That's good. And they think it's normal to be beating themselves up. Yeah. For freedom, you've been set free. Thank you, God. Hey, what a message. I just want to tell people. I just want to get them free. I just want to tell them, you're worthy already. You're righteous already. This is what Jesus did. Look how good he is. 
Okay, so I'm a pastor. I have a vision. I could tell you God gave me this. This is our mandate. We're to do this. Do you know what? I'm not going to say that. If, if it's true that God gave it to me, he'll put it on your heart and you'll respond. And to those who don't want to respond, it's perfectly okay. You don't have to respond at all. If it's not stirring your heart to do anything, you don't have to. It's for the people that the Spirit is calling to something in it. That's all. And I want to tell you about it. It's called Grace United. I'm just, going to t- I'm just five more minutes and I'll be done. <coughs> Six. <laughs> Grace United, you have those packets in front of you. Here, would you do me a favor and open it up. And on the left-hand side, you can read all the stuff in there later. But on the left-hand side is this little envelope. And with the envelope is... Well, there's a giving card, and, and, the other, and the other card is a response card. And you'll see on there, it's the one that says Voice of Grace Radio and some other things on there and check boxes. And I just want you to hold that for just a couple of minutes while I tell you a little bit about what I'm thinking about this, this plan that we can do. And I want to tell you, this is happening already. This is not like out there somewhere, we're, we're going to make this thing happen. No, it's happening. It's happening right now. Parts of it are, are taking place right now. See, you and I both know, we've been in touch with people who've told us, who've seen, who've seen the big picture, the world picture, and they're saying this message that we're preaching right now is, is a revolution and a reformation. That is, it's a wave that is rising all over the world like, like it has never had be, have before. Betty Britt says the last couple of years he's not seen anything like it. This thing is getting stronger and bigger. And there is no stopping it, right? Because, hey, when somebody comes into the freedom of Christ, they ain't never going back, right? I am, I'm never going back to what I preached before. Neither are you. You get this. You're just going to go forward in it. And, I mean, this thing is gaining moment, momentum, and it's rising in this earth. This is a move of God, and it is a verifiable reformation of the church. We are in the middle of it. We are perfectly positioned. And I believe that there are things that we can do to uh, encourage this and to bring this uh, give this uh, movement greater voice. And I want to, I just want to say, there are five, I call these five pillars for Grace United. And I'll quickly run through these. The first one is, is a website. And the website has on the website, uh, graceunited.net, all the resources for all the, all the, uh, the, the uh, new songs that are being written that are grace-based songs for worship. All the teaching materials, Sunday school materials that are grace-based Sunday school materials. Books that are being uh, put out there and written almost as fast as we can read them. Because people are getting this. You know, the Jesus is book. Come on, before that, pure grace book. Right? All those books that are being written. To, to point people to all those materials. And to answer a question that we have so often gotten from people who are watching us online. Is there a church in my area that is like your church? I want to be a part of a fellowship like that. And our answer has always been, I don't know. I wish I knew. We are answering that question right now. And I'm telling you, we have somebody who's investigating churches. And every day, there's a map of, the, of, of, of our country. And pretty soon, there's going to be a map of Canada on there. And you're gonna, someone in Canada is going to click their province and because that's like our states, yeah. see, and then they're gonna they're gonna be able to find churches in their cities, and just like in our country, they'll click the state, and they're gonna find churches in their community that preach this message, and we're gonna be able to answer that question: Is there a church in my area? Yes, there is. Go here, and th- and when when people think of grace, we want them to think of Grace United. That we will be the clearing house for grace. We will be the Google of grace. Everything out there that, has, that is grace related, they're going to come to this website and they're going to find the answers that they are looking for. And on this website, we will list all the ministries, not just the churches, but the ministries that are preaching this forth. And, and all the events that are going on, all the conferences that are happening all over the world. We want people to know. We want to forward people to these events that are going to strengthen them in the word of grace. And on this website, we are going to have the Voice of Grace Internet Radio. 
24-7, all grace, all the time. Preachers from all over the world will send us 30-minute clips, or we will format their clip for them, and we will put it on there. And for any monthly donation from any pastor that is in doctrinal agreement, we will put them on, we'll give them a slot on the, on the Voice of Grace radio from Grace United. And we will give them a platform to be heard. And how would that be to be able to, you know, be laying on your bed. And any time of the day, you're just going to get a different flavor of grace. Praise the Lord. There's the connectivity that's going on in the world. It's, it's, it's miraculous. I get the internet on my television now. I can listen to this on my television while I'm cutting vegetables in the kitchen. Or while I'm working on the car out in the garage. I can listen to this all the time. I can listen to it on my phone. We could do all kinds of things with that, but the, the main point is to have a platform by which pastors will be able to get out there. We'll be able to feed, you know, all the people that will come that just want to hear grace. And, you know, you get stuck on a certain pastor because you don't know of other pastors that are out there. How's that? How would that be? Come on. You get to listen to a different pastor all the time. So that's happening. That, and, in fact, that is being developed right now for this website. Right now. Where's Martin Eady? Is he here? How, just would you mind standing up? Martin E is the, the, the techno guru behind putting that part of it together. And I'm telling you, that is going to happen. That is happening. But you know what we need? We need people who are going to be able to reach out to pastors and say, hey, we want to put you on this internet radio station. We need, we need DJs. How, fu- how much fun would that be? Come on. Uh, the, to do the scheduling of the, of the programs and so forth. To get on in between them and say, that was Pastor Greg Greether. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> All that stuff that you can imagine doing. We need to fill all these slots. If that interests you, if you feel the spirit, st- you feel your heart being stirred, just check it on the box. Yeah, Voice of Grace Radio. I want to learn more about it. This doesn't commit you to anything except to get more information. We want to talk to you. The, the, the second pillar of Grace United are local conferences. Here's what I know. I know this for a fact. There are pastors out there who are getting this message, and they are bravely and boldly speaking it forth in their congregations, and Pete and their congregations are doing the slide. I mean, there are people leaving their churches. When I started preaching this, I tell people I preached our church down to 20 people. And I mean, that's what happens in a church. We know two pastors, they got this in Texas. They started preaching it out, and guess what? Their churches, their, their uh, members started leaving. And they preached their church down. But, you know, we were there to encourage them. We linked those two pastors together through Grace United. We said, you you guys can strengthen one another. But you know what they need? They need more help than that. Because there are people out there who would come to their church if they knew that they were there. Because there are people all over this country, all right, that get this message. And they are looking for churches. And I can tell you, this is our tech, technical guru people. Uh, Derek, who's back there, he, he's, he could tell you... He could tell you how many people within a 50-mile radius of Tulsa like Joseph Prince on Facebook. And you could target those people with ads at a very low cost. And in fact, we just started doing that. 300,000 impressions we are giving people. In a 50-mile in a radius, we're reaching 4,000 people. Okay, with all these multiple impressions. Before you move to Singapore, check out Healing Grace Church. That's our deal. That's showing up right now. Maybe you're here because of that. We can do that. We could show pastors how to do that or we could do it for them. And so my idea is we have low-cost local conferences where we take someone like Christy, who Christy is at her absolute best when she's in a territory that is semi-hostile. And she is proclaiming (laughs) the good news in such power and passion. To have a pastor come in like Christy... To put her into that where there's a conference that's advertised and Grace United has all the pre-printed materials that we make as part of the deal. And it costs that church next to nothing. All they got to do is, is put up Christy and, and feed her. And she doesn't eat that much. And so <laughs> the offerings are taken and that's how it's paid for. They go to her because she's going down there giving her time and her effort and her message. And she preaches forth and we advertise for these these local pastors, for, for next to nothing, they're getting a conference. And we're getting in touch with people all around them in their area who love this message already. We bring them to their church. And voila, we got, we got churches that are getting strengthened. That's the local conferences. We make this a template that we take to, for, you know, Grace United 
Canada, Grace United Mexico, Grace United Uganda, Grace United Brazil. It goes all over. All it takes is one person who's, and one evangelist who's willing to go. The third, the third uh, pillar in Grace United is the Voice of Grace magazine. We, uh, this is happening. This is hap- not a newsletter, okay? Not, not a rinky-dink little publication. I mean a high-quality, charisma-like magazine we can all be proud of. And where's, where's Sarah Maitland? Just stand up. She is the point person. She is going to make this a reality. I mean, she's already started working on it. Listen, she needs help. We're like, we're, like, we're getting the technology in order, and, and that's going to happen. But we need journalists. We need journal. If you're watching online, we need journalists all over the place who can write articles and, and photographers and lots of other things that are going to make this uh, Voice of Grace magazine a reality. I mean, we'll make it an, an, e, an e magazine too, but it's going to be a print. It's going to be something we can proud of, be proud of, and hand to people and send to churches and go and be able to say this is what this reformation is all about it's not about the crazies out there with every reformation you got crazies you got people who are you know post-biblical talk like you know well we're beyond the no 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 that's not who we are you know universalism no that is not who we are i mean we the bible is our authority and we're going to be able to say that and define the movement and and so this voice of grace uh, magazine we need help that's the third pillar the, the fourth one is the national and international conferences where together, you know, we could do things we just can't do on our own. You know, you can't go to Joseph Prince's little tiny church and say, hey, uh, you want to come to our, our church and, and talk? That is not going to happen. But you know what? A band of churches, I mean, 100 churches or, or 150 or 200 churches could say, we are ready. Come on. You could go to people like Creflo Doll. You could go to people who you want to get them in, you know, just... The, you know, the, the people that will have a draw make, uh, and then have a conference that we allow people. Here's a vision. How about this? We allow, we allow pastors and ministers 30-minute clips in, this, in, in the conference. We do 20, 25, 30-minute teachings where we hear what's happening in the trenches and what God is showing pastors in the trenches. And then we have these, 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 you know, these, the more famous guys out there, and we give them a little bit more time. And they get to, pre- they get to sow the word of grace into people who are coming to this conference. And we have, we, have, uh, we have workshops to just pour into pastors and pour into pastors and those who are, who are teachers and, and to strengthen them in, their, in, in the transitions that they are making, to talk theology and to just give us – just give – uh, just give expression, joyful celebration to this movement that's happening all around us. And then finally, the fifth pillar is, is the, and we need somebody to head that up. I don't have a leader for that. I, I want to see that happening one year, one year from right now, a national conference right here. And, you know, they can be anywhere. We can hold them out. How about Jerusalem? Why not Jerusalem? How about Jerusalem for an uh, international conference? Would that be cool? But, but we'll have one here next year. I don't know who's going to do that. Maybe it's you. If, if, if the Spirit's tugging on your heart, I can do that. I've got experience with this. I know how to pull this off. We can do this. Just check the box. Or if you want more information or you want to help, we need 100 volunteers for that. It, don't be overwhelmed with this. Don't be overwhelmed with any of this. It's just if it's in your heart, man, it's going to happen, and you'll find joy in it. And the last thing is the Grace Bible School, which will just start online. And we've already got courses that are out there and courses that are being written. And in fact, Art has a tremendous idea and he's got speakers lined up to do kind of a Grace Boot Camp for people who are excited. They want to go deeper. And that's going to happen. And we can put that on Grace United and we can, we can start uh, pouring into people who want more. And that's going to expand to other courses. And then it's going to expand to an online grace school and then, and then a physical school. And that's the end goal for that. We want to have people coming to uh, this place and being able to be fed the pure word of grace and taking that out to the nations everywhere they are. And that, that's it. And I'm telling you, you know, it, it, only, it only takes people and money. I preached this, to, uh, I preached this down in Sarasota. I, I, I gave this, this little spiel and... Down there in Sarasota, and you know, I there's a there's a it, it's with every church. There's a there's there's a parochialism that happens. It's like it, it's like this is our territory, and I'm, I'm not put. I'm not. I don't say anything bad about. It. They're all good people. But it's like, who are you 
Who are you to be coming and see, we have to earn their trust. We have to show them this is real. And I mean, if it's going to happen, it, it's right here. And, and, and I believe that there are parts of it that just absolutely are going to happen and are happening. They're unfolding. And I haven't done anything except speak it out, but God's put it in people's hearts already. In fact, I've heard this more than once. That God put this in my heart a long time ago, and this is my place, and I am so happy to be doing this now. Now, if that's you, just check the box. Just check it and send it in. And here's what I want to do. I'd like our ushers, as you're filling that out, um, I'm gonna, I have our ushers. We're going we're gonna to receive those. If you want to give money to Healing Grace, I mean, we need, we need some money. We've got to get our own separate 501C. That costs a couple grand. The, the magazine is probably going to, I mean, we're looking at rough numbers, but it's probably going to be around 10 grand to do an initial issue. And then all these things are going to be self-sustaining financially. There's a way that, that they'll be self-sustaining. But we need up, uh, front money to do this. You need front money for a national conference. And so all these things can be done. And, and if, if, it's, if it's on your heart to give, uh, hey, give generously. Let's make this thing happen if it's on your heart. And if it's not, hey, don't worry about it a bit. It's okay. Do not feel a bit of guilt, not one tinge of guilt, none, for putting that thing away and not doing anything. It's okay because God's put it on people's hearts to do this. If that's you, hey, come on, respond. Let's, let's free people, right? Let's get the callers off them. Let's proclaim to them for freedom you've been set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Art, would you come up here? We're just going to close with this. And we're going to do communion today. As soon as we, uh, as soon as we, as soon as we collect the responses that you're, that you're filling in. If you want to be put, I'll tell you this. If you don't want to do anything else but be kept uh, up on what's going on, just put your email on that. There's a place for your email on the response card, and you can put that in there and just say, I, yeah, I want to be kept uh, up on what's going on. We'll send email updates on what's going on with Grace United. So make sure you get those in. If you need time to fill those out or you're really wanting, uh, you're not sure what to do yet, that's fine too. You can take them home. There's a self-addressed envelope that's in there. Just send it in to us or bring it next week. That's perfectly acceptable. We want to hear from you. And for those of you who are watching online, if, if the Holy Spirit is ministering to you and stirring your heart, hey, just reach out to us. This guy right here is going to get in touch with you. And if you feel like you belong in this place uh, with, with Grace United, hey, take your place. Come on, let's do this together. Together we can do anything, anything, anything. Art, you've got something really special to show us tonight. Yeah. You know, uh, so we... Man, we've had a great time this morning. You know, we all had different kind of callers. And uh, I threw mine away about five years ago. It didn't look like uh, Greg's, but it was a restraining caller on my life. And people that are watching online have been set free, you guys, because of the message that you guys are sending out. So I have proof because I have friends that have uh, written me from all over the world. I'm going to read some of their emails to you, okay? So if we could put that picture up on the screen. I don't know if you got that slide. Uh, they, these are pictures that have actually, these are the people that have written these emails, all right? And I want this to be a blessing to you because uh, God's amazing grace, as we know, is going all over the world, being revealed to people. And you guys have a part in this. Fantastic. That's why I'm here today. So um, here's one. I, I am just sending a note to all the Healing Grace Church. I want to thank Pastor Greg, Sherry, Christy, Juan, the worship team, the technical people behind the scenes who work so hard to uh, live stream the messages. Love the new look of the website. Thank you most of all for sharing the gospel of Jesus to those of us who live so many miles away. God is doing a mighty work in all of you. Many blessings to all, and my prayers are with you. Loving Jesus, Leslie from uh, Ohio. Amen. Pastor Greg and Sherry, greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. We just want to tell you, let you know how much we appreciate you and how thankful we are to be part of the Healing Grace Ministries. We would like to say uh, this on behalf of our Grace Buffet group. We sure enjoy watching Healing Grace live stream and being with you all every Sunday morning. 
Uh, this has been a great journey for us, and we are all excited about what's happening in Tulsa and around the world. You are a great encouragement to all of us, and we are so blessed by your teaching. We want to encourage you to keep on the good work in Jesus. God is so good. You are so blessed and favored. Love, Jorn, Ann, and family from Norway. They have a Grace Buffet group in Norway. Dear Pastor Greg, Christy, uh, Sherry, the team at Healing Grace, I want to thank you for making your services and teaching available online. I've been watching from Toronto, Canada uh, for a little over six months now. It is evident that your heart is so passionate about the good news that we have been made completely free in Jesus, that uh, all our life, our hope, all our yesterdays, all our tomorrows flow out of a life source that is pure love. This beautiful, uh, pure look at Jesus, has, this is what it's done, has enabled me to let go of past hurts. Uh, I've embraced my future in a completely new way. I have not been disqualified by God. This truly is good news. May we all continue to see Jesus revealed in us as we live from his life flowing through us. Sincerely, Karen from Ontario, Canada. I would like to thank Father God for introducing me to Healing Grace website. I, like so many others, had over many years been indoctrinated into a lifestyle of trying to please God with my own efforts. So it was a breath of fresh air to link into this teaching which makes so much sense and which I am starting to live out in my daily life. It's a weekly banquet where I can feast on the good things Jesus has purchased on my behalf. Blessings to Greg and Sherry, Christy, and all the others in the family at Healing Grace. Your brother and sister in the amazing family of our wonderful father, Philip and Heather, England. And these are from some personal friends of mine at my Grace Buffet group. A real, uh, a really, a, in our lives, uh, relying on our lives have been, uh, sorry, rarely in our lives, have we been blessed and encouraged as we have been by the minister of Healing Grace, Tulsa.com? We have never met the folk at Healing Grace face to face, but we feel we are part of the church family. Thank you for the insightful teaching of Scripture that has given us a deeper understanding of the full extent of God's love for us, the truth of God's opinion about us, and a deeper revelation of the finished work of the cross. We bless you and pray for you as we praise and worship our God, with whom nothing is impossible, Clyde and Patricia from Victoria, British Columbia. So folks, if you're watching us online, I want to invite you to connect with us. And uh, you can just send me an email, Art Henkel, H-E-N-K-E-L, Art Henkel at uh, HealingGraceTulsa.com. And I'd love to uh, start corresponding with you. Maybe you're an individual or a couple or a group of friends together. We'd love to connect with you, encourage you, and spur you on in your own journey in the Jesus life and the grace that God has for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Art. Praise the Lord. You know, if you need to, if I know the service has gone a little long, if you need to go, it's okay to go. We're going to celebrate Holy Communion and feast on Jesus himself. And I invite you to stay if you're able to stay. And just let Jesus minister to you so that we know it's not about you doing communion. It's about Jesus serving you. Amen. Receiving from him. Christy, would you come and, and just refocus us on the great gift of our Lord and what he has done for us and prepare us to receive this wonderful gift. Praise God. Hallelujah. The scripture that the Lord gave me for today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 20, and I'm going to read it to you in the Message Bible. Paul said this, he said, because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and we got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. 
the old life is gone. A new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and him and then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world, listen to this, God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by doing what? By offering forgiveness of sins. That's what God did. He offered the forgiveness of sins. Why? So he could put the whole world square with him. What does that mean? He wanted to be able to look on every human being and have nothing standing between God and man. That is the miracle of the new covenant. All right? Now, this is what it says. I love this. God has given us the task of telling everyone. Say everyone. He's given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. See, this is it. It's not what you and I are doing anymore. It's not about our collar that we wear. It's not about what we're doing to become. God's given us the task to tell everyone what he's doing. We are Christ's representatives. And God uses us. That's all he does. He uses us to do what? Persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. Whose work is it, church? God's work. We give the message that he's done it. That's what the finished work of Christ is. That's what it is. And then it says, we're speaking for Christ himself now. This is the message that we speak. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. Isn't that a beautiful message for communion? Think about it. You know, if you're watching online or if you're here today and you have never become a friend of God, Jesus is the express image of God in man. He came here as a man to take on the sins of the whole world. Why? So that you could take on his righteousness, so that you could be made whole in Christ. And that's just a, that's just a believing in your heart. That's just agreeing with what God's already done. And if you haven't agreed with that yet, if you haven't made Jesus Savior, if you haven't acknowledged, I need help, you do that. And you know what? If you've, if you've done that a long time ago, but you didn't really understand that God wanted to be your friend and you thought, like Pastor Greg did for years, that you're a slave, repent today. And when I say repent, I don't mean come down here and cry and look sorry. We don't do penance in this church. Repent is the word metanoia, means change your mind. Change the way you're thinking. Today you've been given enough good news to change the way you think. Amen? So what, what's happening in communion? We recognize and we acknowledge we have already been united with him. We are united with him. Now, we partake of his body. We partake of the bread. We partake of the, of the juice to what? To signify and to receive all that he has for us. So I don't care if it has been oppression and depression that has attacked your mind. You have been freed by the blood and body of Jesus Christ. If sickness and disease has attacked your body, I want you to know you have been freed by the body and blood of Jesus Christ. That's the declaration today. So we're coming into this unity with him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He has already become a friend to you. So you become a friend of his today. Amen. Hallelujah. The night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take eat. This is my body given for you. Do this with your eyes on me. Do this remembering what I've done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Healing, provision, receive.
then after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Your blood's made us clean. Clean forever. Clean forever. Son forever. Daughter forever. Let's just take a moment in his presence and are you can we sing a song in, in worship of our Lord and we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everyone overcome and we The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome, and we have, and we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. blesses you and keeps you. The Lord makes his face to shine on you and is gracious unto you. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, our beautiful God, praise be to God. You're a blessed people. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise Him.
Thank you for coming. The Lord is blessing you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Wednesday.